Okay, so today we're going to look at how you can use Keynote to make a really quick and simple PDF worksheet for your students to work with. You can see that I'm taking a really simple Keynote template here and removing all of the starting content. You then need to consider the size that you want this document to appear. Um, the two best options I would say are the first two. 4.3 gives you quite a square image, it gives you height. I quite like working with the 16 to 9 ratio, which gives me a little bit more space to work with in terms of giving instruction and information to the children. So select the size of template you want to work with. And then you can see here that I'm just inserting, using the plus symbol at the top there, two images that I've taken. So these are tasks that the children are going to work on during the day's lesson. So making sure that I don't remove any copyright details, I am cropping this first um, document just by double tapping on the image and pulling the blue markers inwards. So there's their first task. And then the second one is the photograph of a textbook that we have access to. So I have popped those two tasks into this keynote page. And then to give them a little bit more information, I'm going to use the shapes tool to insert a rectangle. And I'm going to use this to tell them how I want them to complete this work. So I'm going to add a text box with some instructions and I'm going to layer that on top of the rectangle. So I'm going to tell them that I want them to complete the first task in Shobi. Now the issue you'll see straight away is that this black text is not going to show up against my black rectangle. So I will change the colour of this text to yellow so that it stands out. Making sure that I highlight the text first so that it takes the new colour. And then because I've put it into a text box, that allows me to rotate this text and place it on top of my black rectangle, which I'm actually going to make red so that the children definitely notice it and know how I want them to complete that task. I'm then going to group the, the text in the rectangle by tapping on one item and keeping my finger pressed down on that and then selecting the other, which allows me to group these two items. And then I can double tap on the text here to say that actually on the second task, I want them to work in their jotter. So I'm quite liking how this document is coming together, but I feel it's too much work for me to ask the children to complete in one period. So I'm going to use the shape tool again to block off some of the questions because they're quite repetitive and I don't feel that they need to do all of these examples to show their understanding. So I'm just going to cover that second question up and I'm going to try and get this box to blend in a little bit better to the background of the page. So you can see here I'm selecting colour and I'm actually taking a, a sample of the colour of the page to match the tone as closely as possible. So that shape box now looks slightly more subtle. Now of course this means that question three has to become question two, but I can use that, my pen tool to change those numbers and actually I should have done the other numbers as well but I've forgotten to do so. So I'll have to do that at a later date but I'll show you how I do that. I'm then going to take another shape box and cover this question because I don't really like it. It's not really what I'm wanting the children to be thinking about at the moment. So again I go up to style and fill and I swipe to the right and I use that little keynote tool to get that marker. Okay, now the great thing about adding these shape boxes to my page is that it creates some space for me to give more information and more guidance to the children in terms of support and assistance with these questions. So, for example, if I look at this question here, I can actually do the first question for them. So I can use my pen tool to fill in the, the gaps just as I'm wanting them to. find this easier if I zoom in first and then use quite a fine pen to fill in the details. But also because I removed this question here, I've created a whole space on the right hand side where I can actually show a full example. So I can show them that I'm going to do the first question for them. And then I can actually show them what I'm wanting them to do. So that if they are stuck, they've got some assistance there.
Okay, so now that I'm happy with this slide, I need to export it to my camera roll as an image. So to do that, I go up to the three dots in the top right hand corner of my screen and I select export. And then the option that I want to select is image or images and then JPEG high quality. If you have created multiple slides, you can choose which slides you want to export. In this case, I've only got one slide, so it's only offering me that one slide as an option. Now, I have slowed this process down because it is quite quick. I wanted to make sure that we get all the steps in, so don't worry if this seems quite slow. It won't take as long as this on your device. Keynote then exports those images and asks me where I want to save them. So I want to share them to my camera roll. So the option I will select is save images or save image. That will automatically save this as an image into my camera roll. And then I can share that image with my students in any way I choose. In our school, we use Shobi, so I can drop that in as an image and give it a good name. And then they can actually go straight into that image and manipulate it and edit that document as they see fit. I hope this video was useful. I'm certainly finding it a very helpful way to share content with my students whilst giving them instruction at the same time.